hello and welcome back so as you know that in the previous video we have read the values from the keyboard and the controller and then we store that values inside our movement input vector 2 okay we store it in the x and y axes now in this video what we're gonna do is we're gonna separate this horizontal and vertical movement okay and the reason we will be separating them is because now we will be adding the player movement and for the player movement we need the inputs separate because when the inputs are separate then we will uh, let the player know that the player is moving forward or backward or to the left or right right for that what we're gonna do is right here at the top we're gonna create a public float by the name of vertical input and then another float by the name of horizontal input all right once you do that then write down below after this on disabled method we're gonna create another method by the name of handle movement input in which the vertical input float will be equals to movement input dot y and horizontal input will be equals to movement input dot x okay and in this way the inputs will be then separate now once this is separate then what we're gonna do we're gonna add the player movement okay for the player movement what we're gonna do we will be creating a new script right here in the player folder so create a new c sharp script by the name of player movement then click on player and drag and drop the script then let's open this up in visual studio code so right here we will remove the start and update method and in the top we will add a header and in this header what we gonna type is script ref or reference okay because right here below this header we will add script references right so the first reference will be to the input manager script I'm gonna name this reference as input manager as well but the I will be small right make sure that you type this in the same way then the next header will be for the movement and in this movement first of all we will create a vector 3 by the name of move direction then we will add a transform reference which will be a reference to our camera transform all right then we need a reference to the rigid body of the player for now we don't have the rigid body applied to our player but we're gonna do that don't worry name this as player rigid body all right after this we will create a float by the name of movement speed and by default the movement speed will be let's just say 2 if you get back right here we have the player movement now let's go ahead and add a rigid body to our player okay let's turn on the gizmos so that we can see the rigid body on our player this is the player okay we are in normal mode okay the rigid body is applied then let's also add the capsule collider to our player make the y1 make the radius 0.3 height will be 2 or 2.2 and make the y 1.1 okay so now as you can see the capsule collider is perfectly fitting the player okay once you add these two things then we can go back to our script all right let's set up the reference for our input manager script and for our player rigid body right here so we will say awake input manager equals to get component input manager and the reason we are doing this is because the input manager is attached to the same player game object okay and the player rigid body will be equals to get component rigid body 
that's it and for the camera what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna make this public okay that's it once you have the references set up now let's go ahead and create a private method actually let's not make it private just type void name this as handle movement in this handle movement the move direction will be equals to cam object dot forward and let's multiply that by the input manager dot vertical input all right then the move direction will be equals to move direction plus game object dot right multiply that by the input manager dot horizontal input right for now i will complete this method and then i will explain what we are doing in here okay in do in these two lines we are just simply setting up the movement using our inputs okay and now once we have the movement set up we will then normalize it so just type move direction dot normalize then move direction dot y will be equals to zero because we don't want the player to move in the upward direction and then move direction will be equals to move direction multiply that by the movement speed once you do that then create a vector 3 by the name of movement velocity and that will be equals to move direction then the player rigid body dot velocity will be equals to the movement velocity all right this whole handle movement method is basically used for calculating and applying movement to the player then right here in these two lines where the movement direction is equals to the camera the input manager inputs right right here what we do is we calculate the move direction of the player based on the camera and on the input which is coming from the input manager script then this move uh, direction dot normalize what this do is it actually normalize the move direction to ensure constant speed regardless of direction and right here this move direction dot y which we set to zero the reason we set this to zero is because we don't want the player to move in the upward direction okay we just want the player to move forward backward to the left and right that's it then right here we set the move direction to move direction and we multiply that by the movement speed the reason we do this is to determine the final movement then right here what we do is we assign the move direction to the movement velocity and then sets the player rigid body velocity to the movement velocity so this whole method will simply handle the player movement using the inputs coming from the input manager script and based on the camera orientation all right so now in this video we added the movement and in the next video what we're going to do is we're going to add rotation and then after that we will test our whole player movement thing all right so with this done let's end this video right here